When the darker days clouded over Africa, slavery and missionary were rife, and in the 15th century, the Portuguese and the Catholic Society of Jesus, also known as the Jesuits, brought the gospel of Christ to the East African country, now known as Mozambique. The priests lowered their moral standards and became slave traders, buying captured Africans and sending them across the Maritime Empire for labor. And here, a young boy from the Makua people, whose real name has been lost to history, fell into the hands of the scold Jesuits. This boy's story has a painful beginning, but it will lead him to the ranks of prestige in a different world. In another world, Japan relied heavily on silk imported from Ming China, and as the relationship between the two countries grew sour, the Ming Emperor severed strict ties with Japan, and the Portuguese stepped in to fill the void. They bought silk from China and sold them to the Japanese, and through this trade, the Portuguese became rich. They were allowed to build a trading post at Nagasaki, and in no time, it grew into a large epicenter of trade. Soon, the Catholic Society of Jesus established themselves in Japan with the mission of converting the entire Japanese population to Christianity. Several Japanese nobles and over 200,000 people were converted, especially in the Kyushu region. When the Jesuit inspector Alessandro Valignano was ordered to Japan to oversee the operations of the Jesuits, this African slave boy was given to him on a voyage to aid him as a servant, and in 1579, the young African arrived in Japan with his master. He arrived in the Warring States period, when Japan was divided, a period known as Sangoku Jidai. At the time, most of the provinces were conquered by Damyo Nobunaga from the Oda clan and his vassal, Toitomi Hideyoshi. When a young man of African descent entered Kyoto, the people were struck by surprise because they had never seen anyone with such a dark skin, thick muscled body and towering heights before, and his presence became news to the Japanese. The townspeople flooded the Jesuit church just to confirm if the rumors of the exotic man were true, and eventually won the curiosity of Damyo Nobunaga and he ordered for the African to be brought to his court. When Nobunaga met the dark skinned man, he was stunned. He felt he was a Portuguese who had his body blackened with a dye, so he had the young man stripped from waist up and scrubbed. It was then that he believed that people of stranger complexions existed. Nobunaga became close with the African man, and that was when he received his Japanese name, Yasuke. He developed respect and love for Yasuke and claimed that he had the strength of ten men. And in 1581, Yasuke entered the service of the Danyu and became a samurai and enjoyed all the perks as the other samurais. He even had the rare privilege of dining with Nobunaga. With Nobunaga's ambition to conquer all Japan, Yasuke joined his ranks and even fought on his side in the famous Battle of Tenmokuzan against the Takeda clan. In 1582, they returned to Kyoto and Nobunaga divided his forces and tasked them to extend their conquest to the lands of the Oesagi, Mori and the Hojo clans. He then went to the Buddhist temple of Honoji with Yasuke and a few other bodyguards to rest. But this day would be the last for their friendship. The temple was surprisingly surrounded by one of Nobunaga's trusted generals, Ikechi Mitsuhide. He attacked the temple, but Yatsuke and the bodyguards mounted resistance. They fought well, but their meager numbers could not match that of Ikechi's men. Nobunaga was forced to commit seppuku, an honorable suicide among samurais, where he stabbed himself with a short sword. Knowing of his master's end, the ever-loyal Yasuke slipped away and rode to Nijo Castle to protect Oda Nobutada, son of Nobunaga. Joining his warriors, the African flamed into rage and killed many of Ekechi's soldiers, but they were still defeated. Oda Nobutada was caught and also forced to commit seppuku. Yasuke was also caught, but he was insulted by Ekechi and called a subhuman who does not deserve to be killed, but returned to the Jesuit masters. From there onwards, nothing was ever heard from this African samurai who overcame the brutality of slavery to fight among Japan's finest warlords. Today, Yasuke is remembered in Japan as the first foreigner to become a samurai. He is featured in Takashi Okazaki's Afro Samurai and games like Neo. This is the story of Yasuke, the African slave who donned the majestic kimono, held the katana and fought beside Japanese battle-worn titans as a samurai. Thanks for watching. Support us by sharing, liking our social media pages, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more mind blowing historical contents.